so yesterday uh, we have already completed with the supply and the demand the basic concepts which are there now we'll be building on these concepts and we'll be learning some uh, important equations and important uh, topics all right so now once we have understood what a demand curve looks like what a supply curve looks like now the next thing that we'll be doing is how we can determine the price and output which is market price and market output and basically we we'll learn the interaction between demand and supply so what is the interaction between the two so there is a word called market clearing which we'll be hearing a lot as and when we move ahead in our macro portion also market clearing is basically when we say that the market is cleared what is market is cleared basically when your supply matches your demand and when your supply matches your demand it means that there is no there is no shortage there is no shortage or there is no surplus meaning for example i produced 10 kg of a particular good and i was also managed to sell this 10 kg of the good so basically there is no shortage in the market or if i if my demand if is if my demand for a particular product is 10 kg i am able to produce 10 kg of the product and sell it so there is no surplus as well so there is no surplus of the goods or no shortage in of the goods in a particular market that is known as your market clearing right and the price the price and the quantity demanded at which a quantity supplied or quantity demanded or quantity supplied at which your market clears is known as equilibrium equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity clear clear the price and the quantity at which your market clears is known as your equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity now how to find out what will be the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity for this we will be needing the demand equation and the supply equation so we have done both demand equation and supply equation in our previous class right so if i take if you all uh, just if you all have calculators you all can take out your calculator so here if i take my uh demand equation the screen is blur all right let me do one thing i think today we we'll, we are facing some network issues because of the weather <coughs> i have shared the screen you all can zoom in or you all can just pin the screen now okay so a uh, quantity demanded is equal to 100 minus p this is an example which i am taking and quantity supplied is equal to let's say suppose uh, p minus 25 so here here my this thing is minus my my slope is minus for the demand curve we have studied this yesterday a plus a minus bp and here we had what a plus bp so here the slope is what positive the slope is positive now you all can simply equate these two equations so when are we saying that the market is clearing what it means that the quantity which i have demanded should be equal to the quantity which i have supplied correct so these two should be equal what will be the price at which these two should be equal tell me the answer quickly hardik i have shared the screen please just pin the screen which i have shared i have shared the screen already you, you can just pin the screen still you are not able don't pin the screen where i am there you have to pin the screen where which i have shared and if still you cannot see i think there is an issue on your end because i i hope others are, others can see the screen 62.5 so you have to also mention the units for example if it's in dollars if it's in pounds or whatever so 62.5 is the price at which your quantity demanded will be equal to quantity supplied so at this price what will be your quantity demanded 100 minus 62.5 we will substitute price here in this equation what will be my answer what will be my answer 30 Seven point five, thirty-seven point five units. 
so basically what i'm trying to now say that at price 62.5 the units sold and demanded for example you can also calculate qs it will be same it will be same 37.5 so quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal at price what 62.5 so this is my equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity clear clear any doubt so for example let me for the entire chapter i'll be taking an example of bicycle insurance right this is what i've taken in my um, compiler as well bicycle insurance so this was the demand for bicycle insurance this was the supply of the policies of bicycle insurance so we are we can say that the number of policies sold number of policies sold let's say suppose it's in thousands number of policy sold sold is 37500 and at what price 62.5 clear any doubt hardik now the screen is fine to you now the screen is fine all right now once we have done so this is the equation approach that we use the other approach of finding out the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity is using the demand and the supply curves right so here for example i make a so here for example i make a demand and the supply curve so here we can write just simply quantity so if this is my this will be my what demand curve obviously and what is my demand equation which i have written earlier qd is equal to 100 minus p so when price is zero quantity demanded is how much 100 and let's say suppose this is my supply curve what was my supply equation 25 sorry p minus 25 p minus 25 so here if my price is 0 minus 25 which is not possible if my quantity is 0 price will be what 25 clear this is just a representation logically it does not make much of a sense because if your price is if you are saying quantity zero price is 25 which means that the insurance companies may be on may be having 25 expense no when no policies are sold 25 is basically the expense something like that but it does not make much of a sense over here so here what do we have is this point what we see over here is where your supply crosses the demand equation so this point where your demand crosses your supply equation this particular this particular price and this particular quantity will be your equilibrium we can denote it using a capital e or a small e this is known as equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity which we have already calculated as 37.5 and 62.5 clear this is how this is how you can show your demand and supply equations on single graph and you can find out the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity the place where your supply equation will call and there will be only one point where your supply will cross the demand equation or demand will cross the supply curve there will be only one single point so only for one single price and one single quantity we say that the market clears market clears meaning there is no shortage and no surplus clear clear now what if what if uh, your your price in the market is currently here which is 70 for example so in this case your this thing this thing will be the quantity demanded and this will be your quantity supplied at 70 so now as the price increases from 62 to 70 as price increases quantity supplied increases but quantity demanded decreases clear but quantity demanded decreases so here quantity demanded has decreased and price has a uh, quantity supplied has increased clear is this clear no problem so here when i am saying that the quantity supplied is greater than quantity demanded this situation is known as surplus meaning i have more number of policies in the market 
the de- the supply for the policies is higher than the demand maybe there are more insurance companies or maybe there are there is one insurance company selling a lot of policies but the demand for so many policies is not that much in the country clear this is known as surplus and this is at the price which is higher than our equilibrium price clear clear now now what if i what if i take another situation wherein i take another situation wherein suppose the price is the price is at here the price is at here let's say suppose 50 rupees so if your price is falling i hope it is visible all right so if price is falling your quantity supplied will fall and quantity demanded will increase law of demand law of supply price increases quantity supplied increases quantity demanded so vice versa basically so here now this is my new quantity supplied and let me just quickly remove this and this is my this is my quantity demanded so here the quantity demanded has increased quantity supplied has decreased so now this gap this gap what we see over here is where we are having quantity demanded more than the quantity supplied so the demand for the policies is more than the supply clear so here in this case this situation is known as shortage of policies so shortage now when you have a shortage in the market for example what happened during the time of a covid when the covid started there was a shortage of what sanitizers but that situation was different that was not due to the change in price so let me just take for example uh suddenly the price of a particular good decreases so the demand for that will increase but the supply will decrease demand will increase that will create a shortage in the market so if there is a shortage for a particular good what will happen if there is a shortage the price will start to increase if there is a shortage of a particular commodity the price will start to increase if if there is a shortage and price starts to increase your if price starts to increase quantity demanded starts to fall and quantity supplied starts to increase so basically we will be moving upwards the demand curve and upwards the supply curve there will be a movement towards the right of the supply and left of the demand because there is a shortage in the market because of this shortage the price is increasing since the price is increasing quantity demanded is falling and quantity supplied is increasing and we reach the equilibrium again and at this equilibrium we say that the market clears and why do we say it as equilibrium quantity demanded is equal to quantity supply that is one thing equilibrium is a situation we generally call as call, call the situation as status quo which is which we learn later on but as your uh, equilibrium position is a position from where you are not willing to move up or down equilibrium is a position from where you will not be willing to move maybe up maybe down you will not be willing to move so this shortage is leading to increase in price which is leading to increase in your quantity supplied decrease in your demand and your equilibrium same situation will happen when there is a surplus when there is a surplus meaning there is a lot of supply of a particular product but the demand is less in such a case price starts to decrease if price decreases quantity supply decreases quantity demand increases and we move along the we move along the there is a movement along the supply and the demand curve when we again reach the equilibrium clear surplus so supplies price right hardik i didn't get your question supplies okay it was something which you wrote earlier right okay so you all can just unmute yourself and speak no problem you all can unmute also and speak right clear is it is this clear to everyone clear how do we reach equilibrium position 
right this entire thing is known as equilibrium equilibrium rise and output clear yes see it, see in the in the real world when we are talking about when we will be making these models you always consider these models to be theoretical or something which is optimal situation in in practical life in real world you will never see a market where the market is in equilibrium there will always be a surplus there will always be a shortage this is a utopia or you can say this is something which we want it's, a, it's an optimal situation what we want to achieve but in real world in practical situation practical world you will never be at equilibrium you might be close to equilibrium and in real world it is very difficult to ascertain a equilibrium because it is very difficult to ascertain the supply and the demand curves and we will elaborate on this later when we'll be studying different market structures perfect competition and all those we'll be elaborating on this concept but in the real world there are many factors affecting the supply and the demand curve so it is very difficult to ascertain the equilibrium price and quantity clear so we are never actually on the equilibrium in the real world this is what we want now again just like statistics where you are constructing different models where you have different models you have certain assumptions on those models right then only that model is considered to be valid similarly in economics we when we are discussing these different models we have certain assumptions in mind for example we say that the consumer is behaving rationally the producer is behaving rationally if price will increase quantity demanded will fall so all these situations are what we are considering optimal right but obviously these situations may not always hold true in the market even if the price is increasing it might so happen that the demand will increase so it depends in the real world in theory when we are doing it we have certain assumptions in mind clear so we don't always get a equilibrium if you are searching for equilibrium price of potatoes you will never get that you will never get that even yes but see it depends on the size of the market for example if you are taking if you are living suppose you are in calcutta for those who are staying in calcutta here if you are considering one single market one single may it may be a supermarket it may be just a particular location for example uh, bada bazar those who are staying in calcutta so here but it's it's a small market which is a part of a large city now that market might be having hundred of hundreds of vegetable and fruit sellers right so it may so happen that all these sellers will give you approximately same price for 1 kg of potato right very 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 common scenario but if you are purchasing that same 1 kg of potato from some other market in calcutta only you might get it for a different price so in the same city you have different prices but your size of the market if it's small then you can determine the equilibrium but as your market size increases then it becomes difficult to ascertain the equilibrium clear so this we'll talk about more when we do different market structure right so now this is what we have determined now obviously these were the movement along the new demand curve what if i say that your demand or supply curve there is a shift in the supply or shift in the demand due to some other reasons for example let me just quickly draw a curve for you all here um we have price we have quantity now here let me construct a demand curve my supply curve now for example and it does not uh, always you know you have to draw it through the uh, it, you you can draw this is a linear curve which i have drawn you can also draw it somewhat like this so it doesn't matter that you are constructing a linear one you can construct a curve as well so it doesn't matter much so here for example i have supply and demand curve now i am saying that there is so this is what supply for bicycle insurance policies and demand for bicycle insurance policies now i am saying that suppose there is an increase in the supply maybe 
the increase is due to new insurance companies coming in right so there are new insurance companies coming in in the market and there is a shift in the supply curve at all the prices because the new suppliers are coming the supply will increase so we'll we'll shift our we'll shift our supply curve to the right this is a new supply curve this is a new supply curve now earlier earlier this was our equilibrium this was our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity p1 and q1 here this was our e1 earlier this was our equilibrium now since there is a shift in the supply curve at this price p1 what do we have we have a we have a increase in the supply we have a increase this is the increase in the supply which is happening the quantity demanded is here only maybe let me con let me let me just quickly write so we g and h maybe g is now our quantity demanded at price p1 h is the quantity supplied at price p1 now so it has created what surplus in the market at price p1 at the equilibrium price so earlier the equilibrium price for p1 at p1 it has created a surplus clear so now p1 cannot be our equilibrium now p1 now since there is a surplus in the market at price p1 it will lead to what surplus will lead to what quantity demanded it will lead to basically what change in price price will fall quantity demanded will increase quantity supplied will increase so basically quantity supplied has already increased quantity has already increased so what we'll do is here here we'll reach oh so decrease so we will now reach this particular position this particular position and quantity demanded was increasing and so we reach this new equilibrium at p and q so price has decreased and the equilibrium quantity has increased so what happened let's just quickly go through it so my at price p1 there was sudden increase in the supply because of the new players coming in the market and so the supply was increasing at p1 supply was increasing demand was not changing demand was not changing so there was a surplus at p1 surplus will decrease the price decrease in price will lead to increase in quantity demanded decrease in quantity supplied so why i am saying decrease in quantity supplied because see there is a movement along s2 curve correct there is a movement along s2 curve this happened after surplus and after price started falling and quantity demanded increase so we reach a new equilibrium this equilibrium is where the price has decreased and quantity has increased now listen to this very very carefully what i will say next when your so what happened first your so your supply curve your supply curve shifted to the right so supply increased supply increased equilibrium price equilibrium price decreased there was no change in the what demand no change in the demand no shift in the demand whatsoever so that is why we say that supply shift in supply has a opposite effect on the equilibrium price supply increased and price final price decreased now one just wait for one minute just wait for one minute for example just see to the smaller graph which i have made now for example suddenly people are using bicycles a lot because of covid everyone is using bicycles right they are keep, they are they have become very health conscious so their demand for bicycle insurance policy has increased a lot and now my d1 has shifted to d2 i hope this graph is uh, this graph is visible now here my earlier the demand my earlier the price p1 and q1 wa was my what equilibrium right this was my equilibrium at this equilibrium p1 since the demand increase 
this is my new quantity demanded and supply is the same at P1. So this created what shortage in the market. Shortage will lead to increase in price and increase in price will lead to decrease in quantity and increase in quantity supplied. So there will be a movement, upward movement along D2, decrease in quantity demanded and upward movement in Q in supply curve which is increase in quantity supplied and we'll reach here this will be our new equilibrium P2 and shift clear is this clear is this clear now what is happening what is happening when your demand is increasing what is happening the final price the final price P2 is increasing so that is why later on we learn something called as demand pull inflation cost push. Now why? Listen to this very carefully. It's very, very, very important concept. When supply increases, right, of a particular commodity and when I'm saying supply increase, shift in the supply curve, right? Supply increases, there is a shift in the supply curve, all right? Why? Because the new players were coming in the market. So finally, there is no, I am saying no change in the quantity. There is no change in the quantity supplied or demanded whatsoever. Demand may koi change nahi hai. Now if the supply is increasing, finally your price is falling. So we call this as cost push. Why cost push? Because it moves away. For example, if supply had decreased, for example, if supply had decreased over here, alright, it's very important that you all listen. I'll just read. If this thing is clear, then the entire chapter will be cleared. So see, this is my current equilibrium. This is my current equilibrium. E1, Q1. Now, there are some players in the market who are leaving the market, right, who are leaving. So supply will decrease at the current price. Now at the current P1, what is happening? This is my new quantity supplied and quantity demanded is same. So there is a shortage of policies. There is a shortage. And if there is a shortage in the market, price will increase, quantity demanded will Increase quantity supplied will fall. So again there will be a movement upwards along the demand curve and sorry sorry. Right? There will be upward movement along the demand curve and supply curve and we'll reach to this position where our P2 price has increased final price and quantity has decreased. So when we just talk about price, listen to this, when we just talk about price, what are we saying is that the supply, supply curve shifted upwards, meaning supply decreased, finally the price increased. And when we say supply decreased, the supply decrease generally happened due to many reasons. One of the most important reasons is the cost of production. So might so happen that the cost of production has increased. That is why there are some companies who are leaving the market. And if cost of production is increasing and some companies are leaving the market, the supply curve is shifting to the left. And this creates an upward pressure on price. So we call it as cost push inflation. Cost is pushing up the price. And if price is increasing, it leads to inflation that we'll talk later on. Clear? And why we call call it as demand pull inflation because when demand is increasing it is pulling price with it with it it is pulling the price also so whenever you get a question and there is a shift in the supply curve you will get these a lot in your mcqs so it is very very important that you have this in mind because see in m in uh, cb2 we have 29 MCQs, right? So we cannot spend more than 20 to 25 minutes on MCQs because you have to write a lot, you have to type a lot. So we have to be very quick with these MCQs and you literally get these kind of MCQs which makes you very confused. So 
you always have to remember if there is a shift in the supply and supply is increasing finally the price will decrease so always it's opposite if demand is increasing when i'm saying increasing shifting to the right then your price will increase this is only happening when we are considering that either there is a shift in the supply or there is a shift in the demand individually i am not saying that the both the curves are shifting is this clear to all of you any doubt any doubt any doubt right so we can understand using both the concepts that if there is a increase in the supply shifting of the supply to the right price the final price will acha also one more thing let's talk about quantity now now when my supply is decreasing the quantity is decreasing which is obvious and when if you all remember when the supply curve was shifting to the right when the supply curve was shifting to the right this was the new equilibrium q3 so quantity was increasing so what we conclude over here when we talk about supply if supply increases which means the supply curve shifted shift shifts to the, towards the right final price will fall quantity supplied or demand will increase obviously because supply is increasing new players are coming in if supply decreases if supply decreases price will increase and quantity supplied or demanded will also decrease this is when there is only a change in supply no change in demand meaning no shift in the demand only movement along the demand curve is this fine if it is fine please write a yes and also i want all of you all to write this down in your compiler can people is this clear just give me a quick thumbs up clear all right now now let's talk about demand when your when your demand shifts to the right meaning maybe demand for bicycle insurance policies are increasing people are now using bicycles a lot so this moved my so this was my p1 and p2 q2 sorry and then here this is my new man curve and this leads to my new price and new price and quantity equilibrium so here what happened demand increased theek hai increase in demand this led to what upward movement in price because there was a shortage at the current price there was a shortage so price increased and quantity also increased because suppliers started to supply more clear clear now let's say suppose demand in this case what will happen this is the new equilibrium where supply is equal to d3 new demand and your price has decreased quantity has also increased. so if your demand decreases at the current price this is the current price see this black one is the current price at the current price this is new supply and this is the new demand so the supply is higher than demand it causes again a surplus it causes a surplus and surplus will drive down the price so price is decreasing price is decreasing and quantity is also decreasing. this is what happens when there is a shift in the demand curve 
प्लीज राइट दिस डाउन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड इट्स वेरी 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 लॉजिकल ऑल्सो इफ डिमांड इज इंक्रीजिंग प्राइज विल इंक्रीज फाइनल क्वान्टिटी विल इंक्रीज पीपल विल सप्लाई मोर इन केस ऑफ डिमांड डिक्रीज प्राइज विल ऑल्सो डिक्रीज क्वान्टिटी विल इन केस ऑफ इंक्रीज इन सप्लाई प्राइज विल डिक्रीज क्वान्टिटी विल इंक्रीज इन केस ऑफ डिक्रीज इन सप्लाई प्राइज विल इंक्रीज क्वान्टिटी विल डिक्रीज क्लियर इज दिस फोर थिंग्स क्लियर टू यू प्लीज लेट मी नो देन वील मूव टू नेक्स्ट पार्ट Now this is happening only when there is a shift in the demand or supply. But what if both are shifting together? Because in the market, it is generally always both curves are shifting together. For example, what will happen? What will happen? What will happen if now supply increases and supply increases and demand also increases? what will happen to price tell me what will happen to price if supply is increasing this is pushing the price down if demand is increasing this is pushing the price up what will be my final price so hardik is saying that the new price will increase how can you say this jain hardik how can you say this how can you say this? this is pushing my price down this is pushing my price up so how can you conclude that finally your price will increase the final price will increase. how can you say this tell me hardik ja correct it will depend on what is the shift how much your demand and supply curve is shifting if i am saying that the increase in demand the shift in demand is more than the shift in supply which means the effect of demand is more than the effect of supply in such a case your price will this effect will be more and finally your p2 will increase p2 will be more than your p1 clear this will depend on the effect or on the extent at which your both the curves are shifting if the extent of p demand is more then obviously your price will increase clear now what if i say supply increases and demand falls then supply increases means that price will fall demand falls means price will fall so finally in this case we can completely determine that p2 will be less than p1 why it will remain the same of me it will not remain the same if both it will only remain the same if the shift upward shift in the supply is equal to the upward shift in the demand in that case only the price will remain the same clear okay okay no problem very good clear is this concept clear is this concept clear now let us quickly draw the graph and see price here i have my p1 here i have my s1 and this is my current one and one current equilibrium now what am i saying is that there is a shift in the supply let me take an upward shift i said increase rightward shift s so here this is my shift in the rightward shift in the supply curve or increase in the supply and similarly i am taking a increase in the demand as well so increase in demand clear increase in demand now since your supply is also increasing demand is also increasing this is your new equilibrium this is your new equilibrium and what do we conclude this is my new price and this is my new p2 
one thing these questions are very 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 common in exam just see to this very carefully when i am saying that there is an increase in the supply this created a downward pressure on price this created a upward pressure on price so finally what will be the price i don't know it is indeterminate that will depend on the shift so i don't know the quantity of the shift for the timing just forget about the graph just forget about the graph but one thing i am sure is about the quantity if supply is increasing quantity will increase if demand is increasing quantity will increase so this is what i am sure of so questions in exam will be like if what if the question will be supply is increasing and the demand is also increasing what will be the effect on the new equilibrium price and quantity and the options will be price is indeterminate quantity increase price is indeterminate quantity decrease price increases quantity increases price decreases quantity increase something like that so your final answer will be price is indeterminate but quantity increases because that is certain that is certain here in this case in this case when your supply is increasing price is falling quantity is also increasing and when demand is decreasing price decreasing quantity is decreasing so demand is uncertain but price for sure falls so it is that therefore it is very important that you all know these equations this is on your fingertips on your because it is very important you cannot waste time on these mcqs literally you cannot wait waste time you can if you will sit down and draw the graph and you will check it will take a lot of time you have to be very quick with these mcq clear that is why i'm explaining it again and again right so now you can understand with the graph that why there is an increase in price because we can clearly see that the shift in the demand is more than the shift in the supply clear we can clearly see that now other other thing was other thing was supply is increasing so let me keep it as s2 and let me take this as s3 also and demand is decreasing so basically this is my new demand curve d3 here so d3 and s3 here so your price has decreased and quantity has also decreased so why is this decrease in the quantity because we can again see the shift in the demand is more than the shift in the supply hmm tell me this one this one okay yeah yeah i told you no i told you see when supply increases demand decreases this case case 3 is if supply is increasing price will fall your price will fall so we know for sure that price is falling quantity here will increase quantity here will decrease so we cannot say whether it will finally fall or decrease that will depend on the extent similarly here we have done price is falling for sure the shift in the demand is more than the shift in the supply and that is why that is why your your finally quantity is falling clear clear is this clear i want all of you all quickly if you are writing this down something please make it's there these things the the curves are there in the compiler but these equations are not there so i want all of you all to write it down <clears throat> quickly
all right now the next thing this might not come in your exam it actually will not come in your exam but it's a general just a practical concept there is a identification problem in the market what is a identification problem just understand this it might seem a little confusing in the, at the start but it is very simple if demand and supply we are saying that demand and supply depends on price and at the same time we are saying that demand and supply will determine your price so if i say that the demand and supply depends on price at the same time i am saying that the the interaction between demand and supply will give me the current equilibrium price so that is why in market as we were discussing what when hardik asked this question it becomes difficult to identify that what is actually going on in the market in the market when the price and quantity changes suppose you will only know that the price has increased for example recently if you are touch in touch with the news and if you go for vegetable shopping you you all might be knowing the price of lemons increased a lot right price of lemon those who go for shopping price of lemon and people are and we had these memes where people are actually stealing lemons in wedding and those things so basically price of lemons increased now do you know the exact reason why it happened whether the demand increased because of the uh, summer season or whether the supply decreased do you know the exact reason no we just know that the price increased and we know obviously that is due to the interaction between demand and supply but we don't exactly know that what actually happened with demand and actually happened with supply and if you are saying if the government is saying that the, the supply decreased for example so can you for for sure can you say that there was no shift in the demand can you say this so what i am saying is price increased for lemons and you are saying for sure that this happened because there was a decrease in the supply there was a bad harvest or something and supply decreased but can you for sure say that there was no change in the demand can you say that there was no shift in the demand can you say that can you say this no you cannot say this so this leads to identification problem if there is a change in the market price market equilibrium it is very difficult to also say that whether actually there was a shift in supply demand or there was a shift in both or there was shift in just supply or just demand right this is known as identification problem like here like here in this particular graph in this particular graph we said that the supply increased s2 right we said that the supply increased and finally if i am saying you supply increased price also increased but if i am not saying anything about the demand so can you can you just say that did supply increased or did supply did demand increase or did not increase that will depend what the situation is so here i am saying that demand and supply both shifted and price increased if i am saying this to you then you are confident that okay the increase in price was due to the change in demand and supply the change in demand was higher than the change in supply in this case i am saying that the demand shifted downwards i am saying nothing about the supply curve so again it will be difficult for you to identify whether actually there was a shift or there was no shift and the price fell because when your demand is falling your price will fall but here what happened even the supply was increasing that also led to decrease in price so if this is only when this is known that also supply also increased this both of these things together led to a decrease in price if we know this very nicely then only we can conclude that yes what was the graph looking like what was the entire situation like but if i just say that demand decreased price decreased then you will never know about the supply whether it actually shifted or not but here we know that the supply shifted upwards and so that is why price again fall this is the identification problem you will not get any question as such on this particular topic but it is a important concept that you all should know and this is the reason why it becomes difficult to understand the market demand and market supply curves right any problem and yet 
again it is very difficult to identify the actual equilibrium price or quantity and also to identify that what is actually causing the shift in the price and the shift in the change in the price and change in the quantity here here now uh, if you have your compilers so we'll end chapter 3 today just a few small very small topics so there is something called as first let us call this word as partial equilibrium which i was talking on earlier see when we are saying equilibrium price equilibrium quantity i mean to say that this is the price at which the entire market is clearing but is this possible can you determine the equilibrium price for entire calcutta or entire no you cannot do that for most of the products for many products like something which are traded on uh, exchange traded for example gold silver you go to a particular shop and buy gold every day you will see the price is fluctuating in the same shop although the demand is not changing much within one or two days supply is not changing but since this is because standardized it is set by the government so they determine the price according to their own many factors but if you are buying some non standardized or not exchange traded products like carrots vegetables fruits you will never get a equilibrium price or equilibrium quantity but what is partial equilibrium partial equilibrium if you just decrease the size of the market as i was talking about and you make it just a small market maybe uh, just a particular in the entire city or in the entire town one particular supermarket or one particular market area where you have 50 60 vegetable fruit sellers in that particular market you can easily determine the equilibrium this is known as partial equilibrium this concept when a tiny bit very very tiny 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 bit of an entire economy is taken and you are determining the equilibrium price and quantity this is known as partial equilibrium this equilibrium does not refer to the entire economy it refers to just a tiny bit of a particular large economy clear clear and why we can say that there is a price equilibrium because we know uh, there is a equili partial equilibrium because we know that in such a small market if anything is happening if there is a shift or there is a change in the demand or supply the main reason will be price not a, there will be no other factors affecting so you can determine the partial equilibrium easily but in order to determine the equilibrium for the entire economy you have to consider many other factors into consideration here now there are some non financial objectives or incentives for people to change price non financial incentives now what are these incentives that we are talking about so for example incentives what is incentive incentive is something which drives the individual decision making unit firms and uh, businesses to make certain kind of decision whether you are purchasing something or you are selling some, something there might be certain intention incentive behind that you might be getting some financial incentive like profit or non financial incentive like some satisfaction so when i am saying that there is a shortage shortage of a particular commodity in the market what do we say that the price the market price falls sorry the market price increases clear if the market price increases your opportunity cost for that particular good will increase what is opportunity cost for example i have um by i can buy only two types of insurance car insurance or bicycle insurance for example all right now if by price of bicycle insurance is increasing my opportunity cost my opportunity cost to buy the car insurance will increase next best alternative this is in so i might end up buying the car insurance and not the bicycle insurance 
तो माय डिमांड फॉर बाइसिकल इंश्योरेंस विल माय इंसेंटिव टू कंज्यूम दिस लेस विल इंक्रीज so there is some non financial incentive as well what was my non financial incentive that my opportunity cost increased that is why i end up buying car insurance of bicycle insurance also there is an incentive for a for the firms firms who are selling both car and bicycle insurance they will end up selling more of bicycle insurance and there is a financial incentive that they are having more profit this is the financial incentive this is the financial incentive what can be some other incentives that they may, may have there may be a tax relief on the bicycle government is giving you a tax relief if you are selling and buying bicycle incentive uh, bicycle policies clear so here we have non financial incentives also play an important role when we look at the at the motives of the people who are making decision for example when you give charity there is no financial incentive behind that generally it's the non financial incentive that you are looking into what is that non financial incentive if i am buying something and i am actually giving it for charity that buying was only because i wanted to do this charity and this charity makes me happy so it gives me a non financial incentive so again uh again we say that uh these incentives what we say as non financial incentives not all these can be taken into account when we are constructing these models so these are talked about more in behavioral economics which some part of it you might study in your cm2 course other than that it's a complete whole new subject that people are currently moving into so from this old school of economics now people are moving towards behavioral economics they also consider how people will react in certain certain situations right and we'll talk about this more as we move ahead with although it's not there in our syllabus somewhere we'll be talking it's not there in our clear clear so this is it for today i want all of you all to please read the entire chapter 3 right and uh, we can do some of the questions which we'll be doing in, in our next class and we'll be starting with chapter right okay and then uh, i'll also let you all know when you all can start doing your solving your compiler i will let you all know that but now you just have to go through chapter 3 that's it all right anyone over here who's appearing from iei